Cheers. It's Woo-hoo. Thursday. Woohoo. Right. Up, everybody. Everyone's got their drink of choice tonight. Yes, sir. <laughs> I saw you got a Dosex. Is that right? Yeah. It's just kind of what they had. It's, yep. it's like middle of the pack. I'm out of beer. Ah. <laughs> I was staring at the aisle. I'm like, do I go Dan's yeah. route make, of uh Get that, <laughs> that te- Fort Miller, Worth craft beer. Um, yeah. Yes, you got the the finest beer from Texas. Yep. <laughs> but these little uh, Yeti like koozies are awesome. Oh, nice. Yeah, Which I need to get. I, you know what we were talking about? We need to get some like stub koozies. Oh yeah, that'd be like badass. specifically like with like the like the Movolino on it and stuff. I yeah. need that. So anyway, uh, hello everyone. It's Thursday and somehow uh, again, holy crap. It, Every week it happens. This week was so fast. It, it was, really was. This has yep. been a really busy week. Um, just nonstop, nonstop. Oh, yeah. Pre-freeze. Oh, yes. Geez. So uh, you guys are getting a freeze? Oh, yeah. A hard thing. Like, yeah. Can There's you things. believe I'm supposed to be in Austin, I'm in Austin next week for work? Oh, are you? <laughs> You're bringing it. Damn <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah, so when, what's the story? When's it hitting? Uh, it's supposed to hit Sunday, I think, in the afternoon. And then it goes until Tuesday. Yep. Okay. And I think uh, Monday night overnight, it's supposed to get down to 11. Yeah. Negative two wind chill. Yeah. Which doesn't mean anything, but. Oh my no, gosh. but that's like 11 is colder than that big freeze we had. Yeah. But the precipitation forecast is pretty much still almost zero. Okay. Yeah. They said so there was a good... chance of freezing rain Monday night, but. Very little, like not like last year where yeah, it yeah. took down every th- every tree in the world. Oh, dude, that that was terrible. Yeah, God, I mean, that was pretty so much sad. expected now. Every January, February in Austin yep. for the past but, three years. What I find hilarious is how it's like every news outlet in Texas is basically like, oh, like everyone's got PTSD <laughs> and will the grid survive? And <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Shouldn't this like be a wake up call that things aren't right? That this is how Texas reacts to what is really not a big deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I've lived here long enough that we've been through a lot of freezes. So, yeah. I guess everyone's just all freaked out. Yeah. Oh, well, I coming from places that normally get cold. Why the there's water running the attics here? Still oh, dude, drives I don't. me nuts. Mm. Yeah, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It's like, why don't you just run it in the foundation like every other place on earth or, you know. Yeah. Let my water heater be in the garage like every other house. Oh, yeah. my I have two water heaters. One of them's in the garage. The other one's in the ceiling in the attic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. My, my only one is in the attic. And it's like. I'm like, that's the dumbest shit ever. I wonder if, if they're that... building new houses any differently because they of this. Yeah, they are. The, some of my coworkers have bought new houses say they're. You know, nothing's in the attic anymore. It's like, well, thankfully, they figured it wow. out. Yeah. I mean, the only thing only thing I can say is at least this house compared to my last house has like like huge amounts of insulation. Yeah. Like it's like 36 inches deep. I mean, it's seriously up to your waist. So <laughs> yep. I feel at least a little bit OK about that. But yeah, I, I don't have that here. And these windows are 13 years old and just you can there's like a breeze of cold air coming through them with the heat differential. I, I want to go tankless, but I all my water, I, I only have electric. I don't have any propane, any natural gas. And to do an all electric water Ugh. heater was like, I looked into it and it's like something like 120 amps just for the heater. Ooh. And I was like, mm, no, <laughs> <laughs> I would have had to upgrade the electrical service for the entire house just to handle the water heater. Yep. It's like, no, thanks. Yeah, I've got my pool equipment wrapped, Greg. Oh, hopefully the power doesn't go out because then it'll, you know, the freeze protect will keep it running. But yeah, uh, well, that's that's part of the reason I have my generator is just to run the pool. Yeah, I need. I'm to so get glad that. I don't have a pool <laughs> for those reasons. So long as it's circulating, it won't pop. Yep, but it's just got to stay moving. So I might, I might like it has like a auto feature where it just pumps slow, just yeah. to keep the water moving. Your, your pool is fancier. Mine just runs full speed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> mine's only got two speeds. It's got like that's slow cool. and then like, you know, like full bore. Uh, that's fair enough. So, yeah, I need to, I should employ you to wire in a generator hookup for me. Cause... Okay. It's not hard. <laughs> yeah. I know. I mean, it, 
I, I, don't know, I think I've spent maybe 150 bucks on the hardware. It's not bad. No. So, and then the generator, I got it on a sale. Hmm. Back in the day, it was only like 800 bucks. Now that same generator is like 1300 bucks. I know. They've gone up a ton. It's because every, everyone in Texas bought one. <laughs> Basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Every January, February, they disappear from Texas. Oh, jeez, man. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's it's weird here. Like, the pool... My pool's still, like, <laughs> beautiful. It's all blue. Oh, and... yeah. I could jump in it right now. It's cold. I, I'm too cheap to run the heater, but... <laughs> yeah. Screw that. Like, I I had a... um From the wind, we've had a windstorm the last few days, and it blew all this crap into the pool. And so, like, it's filling up the skimmers and the, the pool cleaner. So I'm having to change it like every single day right now. And you get your hand in that water. And if, by the time I'm done changing out all the skimmers, my hands are totally numb. Like oh, I yeah. can't even like close them. I'm like, oh my God. So uh, it's brutal. Yep. Uh, don't buy cheap. Get the whole house generator. I, so I looked into it and it doesn't make sense for me because again, no natural gas, no propane. Yeah. So to buy a diesel whole house generator was ridiculously expensive. Oh yeah. Those, and and yeah. Yeah. here's the thing in the entire time I've lived in Texas for, I don't know, 18 years or whatever. Now I would have used it like four times. The longest was that one snowstorm, which I would have used it for like eight hours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and even they have a duty cycle. You can't just leave them run 24 seven. So yeah. You know, you're still going to be without power in cycles. Because I had a whole house generator in my last house in New Mexico. And mm-hmm. yeah, it it worked great when it needed it. But in that two-year span, it, I needed it once. Yeah. Exactly. And then it just, it's costing you natural gas and oil and maintenance because it test cycles every week. And Yeah. Oh, does it? Yeah. Hmm. yeah I guess I'm, it's more for peace of mind. It is. Yeah. Right? Or, I mean, if you truly lived in somewhere that, like, lost power all the time. Yeah, or if you're running like some serious medical equipment or something. That you yeah, need, yeah, or if you power. have some need for it, for sure. But like the, the here... funny part with that last house was I was on a shared well, so the well lost power, and the only reason I knew I, the power was out because I went to take a shower and I got up for work and there's no water. <laughs> <laughs> like, Damn it! Because <laughs> yeah. yep. the house was on, everything you know, I couldn't even tell. Like it was great, but <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, you you can come crash here if you want. You're you're welcome. Yeah, there you go. Anytime, man. Seriously, Dan's house is the zombie apocalypse. You know, yeah. point. <laughs> Actually, uh, no, uh, no one can come for the next two weeks because my you. my dad's coming for two weeks. Ah, cool. <laughs> All right. Nice. So yeah, my my dad's actually um, coming on Sunday and gonna hang out for two weeks. He, we had a situation. Uh-oh. arise that was unanticipated and caused us some like you know you, you come up with a plan you got the plan and the plan goes to shit so yep. then you're like oh scramble and of course you know so anyway he's coming to help out with some uh child care duties temporarily because he's awesome but um cool yeah yep cool. so anyway car stuff um Oh God! What is that? <laughs> Twitch hey, bot block? It's like every there. I don't think there's been a serious question from Twitch yet. Ah, oh, no. When you block comments, then my chat just bugs yeah. out. Does give that it a happen, second. Tyler? Yeah, give it a second. And it comes back. I hit reload. Oh, it never came back last time. Oh shoot! Hmm. Sorry. Well, no, that, uh, not your fault. I may have to refresh though. Wow. Yeah, I just ignored it and it disappeared just now, and I see Travis's yeah. comments. Oh, dude, Travis, anytime, man. Seriously, just let me know. We have we have lots of guests that come stay at Hotel Dan and yep. Meg. Oh, yeah. Those <laughs> punk beds have seen a lot of action. <laughs> Not that kind of action. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sleep. I hope. <laughs> uh, we do wash the sheets. I mean, every time people visit, just, to, you know, okay. There'll be, there'll be a Casa del Stub here soon, too, right? The the plan had nothing to do with Meg or anything. It's, it's just... Yeah strange crap right like so i don't I'm, I'm pretty sure meg doesn't want me to talk about details of our personal lives i'm not going to but um yeah we just had some we had a plan for child care and that plan didn't 
come to fruition. Hmm. So we're in a mad scramble for other child care solutions is the basic, uh, that's what basic for. story. Yep. Yep. Let me tell you, that shit's expensive. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. The, the, the plan we had, the new plan, which we're trying to enact quickly is going to triple the costs of childcare temporarily. Yay. Jesus. So yeah. we need to sell more GT3 RSs. Oh, dude. <laughs> it's a, it's amazing. Like, so, you know, that was the whole reason, um, that Meg took two years off from work to help raise them is it was basically eating up her entire salary. Yeah. Right. It was kind of like, okay, like, it, you know, like it, not all of it, but, and she did, did have healthcare, which was nice. Yep. And admittedly, like the healthcare she had through her work was way better than the healthcare that we have right now that we're buying on yep. our own. Yep. Um, but it was funny because it was like, geez, like, <laughs> like, do we want to pay a stranger to take care of a child? And basically you work to pay for them. Or do we want you to pay, you know, like just quit and take care of him for a while? So that's what we did. Yeah, Josh is sick. Uh oh. Oh, shit. Hopefully it's just oh, cedar fever with this one. Bad, wind. Josh. Uh, no. Mm. Um, doesn't sound like it from what he texted me earlier. Ah, uh, shoot. Yeah. So I got to refresh pretty... here because my comment thing isn't loading. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, um, I do watch ash sometimes not always but um Ooh. i share that let's see here anyway um yeah so if you've been paying attention to our socials you'll see that we sold the gt3 rs already to that i was so surprised i was like is this going to be another lamborghini situation here yep. that was that was our experiment right is like okay we have not sold a high end Porsche. Like we've sold some lower end Porsches, but nothing like that. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, is this going to be a pain in the ass to sell? You know, whatever. And it was modified, right? Which made it harder. Yep. So we had decent uh, interest. There was the funny thing is the number of people who wanted to buy the parts. Hmm. I had like 15 people asked to buy the parts like the wheels and stuff. Yeah. The wheels, the steering wheel, the wing, mm. all that crap. Like, so I was like, I was, I told Josh, I'm like, well, the good news is we will definitely be able to sell these parts. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. No kidding. Did the buyer um, want them with the car? Or? So the, the buyer is taking them with the car. So they're all gone. Yeah. Um, but here's, what's really fascinating to me is the data is strange. So the Porsche, only had about three and a half to 4,000 views on its listing. Oh yeah. I listed the 458 the exact same time. The 458 has 25,000 views. Crazy. Is that not? Porsche sold. Mm -hmm. In the Porsche sold, huh. which is interesting. But the Porsche sold from a repeat client. Ah. Uh, hmm. Well, that's good. That's even it's better. It's great. No, it's yeah. great. But it's someone that we've already done business with and yep. they saw it. And so they were like, it was funny because they, they sent me a message at like 4 a.m. saying they were interested in the Porsche. <laughs> so I, I responded when I woke up and said, hey, you know, let me know when you're awake. We'll talk about it. So they sent me a message. I give him a call. And he was just like, yeah, I want it. Um, you know, what's the bottom price? And I told him, he's like, okay. I'll send you a wire in, a, in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally like a two minute conversation. And so I called Josh. I'm like, you're not going to believe this, but I just had the easiest sale of my entire life. Like it was like the dude just, he, he knew everything. He already had researched it, whatever. And he was just like, yep, no problem. Sweet. Done. And the wire came in like an hour later. We're like, holy crap. He was oh real. It wasn't a 4 a.m. drunken, like, I oh, right, right. Porsche. You know, <laughs> yeah. we've, had, we've had multiple people be like, oh, I'm going to buy it today. And then we send them the paper and, and then nothing happens. We call them. They're like, oh, um, you know, yep. something. No, he was legit. Yep. Nice. Wow. So, yeah, there you go. Um, we don't ever disclose final sales prices. And that is purely like I personally don't care if you guys know how much money we make on a car. But 
the people we sell the cars to may not be interested in that. So we don't disclose that out of privacy concerns for our clients. It's purely out of respect for them. So, you know, uh, we don't. And so because of that, like, it just doesn't make sense for us to discuss how much we make per car. But what I can tell you is um, the Porsche data, what we expected came true, which is I think the margins on Porsches is substantially lower than Lamborghinis or Ferraris mm. because uh, there's just, there's so many Porsches on the market that everyone basically knows what they sell for wholesale and what they sell for retail. And so there's just not much of a gap. So yeah. the, like, basically you're going to put, put a Porsche out there in market. You're not really going to negotiate on the price, but everyone's going to know that that's a fair price. Yeah, it makes sense. But Was that a not, trade in? No, we bought that one. Hmm. That was not traded. So, yeah, you know. Oh God, and there we go. Like, so, so you do it again. Is what you're saying? Yeah. So we're gonna, we're gonna. Uh, Josh and I talked about we want to try another GT3 or GT3 RS or something like that. Because um, obviously, one data point is not enough to really yeah. to know anything. Um. Uh, I mean. We, to give you an idea, we try our hardest to target 10% margins on all cars. That's usually the goal. Um, I think Porsche, our Porsche's market's probably going to be more like 5%. Um, and 10 percent's not always possible. Like it just isn't. So like 10 percent's like best case scenario in most instances, like Obviously, we're excited when we get more than 10%. Um, and that's why, like, when you do a consignment, it's less than 10%, right? Like, because we're not taking the risk. Yep. So when we when we have consignment cars, it's, it's scaled based on the price of the car. Because basically, like, <laughs> we're not going to, it sounds, it sounds kind of terrible, but it's like, we're not going to do all the work to list a car, film it, clean it up, market it, and answer 800 text messages for like a thousand bucks like i just i'm not interested in that business you know yeah. like uh, other dealerships can do that i'm not <laughs> yep. so like if you have like a car that's like you know under a hundred thousand the rates one thing for consignment if it's like 100 to 150 it, it goes down if it's 150 to 200 it goes down if it's over 200 it goes down and so on right and so it basically ends up that like the amount of money we make um stays fairly close but kind of grows a little just because like when we did the speciale that was a very difficult car to sell yeah so yes it's a smaller margin uh it's a t larger total dollar amount but it was a lot more work so it definitely takes more effort did uh i know the the buyer was cool did you yeah. get a bunch of pedantic people before that with like show the me Porsche the rev Park? limiter hit you know no that was um hmm. it wasn't bad like okay. there was a lot of people wanted to trade tons yeah. of trades and some really bad trades <laughs> um <laughs> not the worst but like a lot yeah. of bad stuff some hundred uh, words but it, it didn't it didn't have the like the huge amass of like oh cheeseburger and 50 bucks you know like stupid crap like that like no um i think so that, part of that's just it didn't get the views right it only had mm. three four thousand views yeah so it didn't it that's the weird thing is even though that's a top of the line creme de la creme porsche it doesn't get the attention so I think it's a harder car to market, but if you put it in the right market, it will sell. And yeah. the other thing is I do think we had it priced honestly too low. Oh yeah. Like I, we, I even had some people at work be like, they're selling that for how much? Yeah. Like, really? So we, were, it then. <laughs> we were, yeah. we were so scared about the modifications killing the value that we priced it. Like we basically looked at the market, the lowest we could find at the market that was comparable was like, 235 240,000. So we're like, okay, let's just undercut everyone at 220. Yeah. And see if it goes fast, right? And in hindsight, I think we probably could have we probably could have got like another 10 grand out of that car. Fair enough. I, I think. 
it would have taken longer. But um, people didn't seem to care. Yeah. So sure, well, yeah, yeah, we got our, our first legit Twitch post. So thank you. Oh yeah. Hey. Legit. Legit yeah. Twitch. You, we're we're going to publish that one because hooray. The first <laughs> time yeah. he has it's a, not a spam post. There's a one earlier. Just scroll up a little bit. Oh yeah, there it is. There the it YouTube is. YouTube viewers won't see that, yeah. but we're getting other well, other chats here. Coming. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. right, screen, right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. There you go. You win. <laughs> I and I definitely agree with Josh in this. I think Porsche people aren't as nitpicky about um, modifications, especially yeah. because all the modifications were Porsche OEM parts. That's fair. Yeah. And so, like, the dude who who owned the car before we bought it spent like 40 50 grand on that car i mean everything he did was top of the line done properly you know it was one of those like no expense spared modifications so and i think people saw the quality of the parts that were on it and were like hell yeah yep you know this is a great car nice. so and and yes there are some definite track people that are like i want that car for the track well even richard said that because he bought the the Cayman, right? And it was like, yep. eh, I'm kind of done with it. But if I make it my track toy, like, mm -hmm. I'll keep it. So I get it. Yep. Yep. So it's interesting. Like, um, and we actually had three or four people trying to buy the Porsche at the same time. Oh, wow. And the craziest part is we had the guy who bought it this morning. We had another guy who was trying to buy it and he didn't put a deposit and we told him like, you know, we don't hold cars without a deposit. And he yeah. texted like an hour after we got the, the wire. He's like, Oh, I've got my, sh my stuff straight out. I want to come by uh, tomorrow. Yeah. And we're like, sorry, dude. Like yeah, it's gone. If you don't give us a deposit, we don't hold the cars. Yeah. It's, it's not always a lie guys. when the dealer says, give me a deposit or I'm so, selling it. <laughs> on that same note, the Lambo has a deposit. Oh, and nice. and crazy enough, here's the funny thing: that car, the second I, and we told him like, look, like we've had some interest, but no one was like really serious, right? And so it's actually a guy I know, and so I'm like, look, you know, if you want me to hold it, you got to give me a thousand bucks. He's like, okay, yeah, no problem. So he sends me a thousand bucks. It hits my bank account, and I'm not even joking. Like I literally am walking out of the office to tell Josh we got the deposit, and my phone rings. I answer it, and the dude's like. I'm going to buy the Lambo and I'm come tomorrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and I'm like, I just got a deposit. I can't. And he's like, I will pay more than they paid. And I'm like, I can't. And I'm like, yeah, you can't sorry. break that. Right. As soon as the deposit comes I'm in. I'm like, I will not do that because yeah. I've had that happen yeah. to me. I'm just, I'm sorry. It's sold. Yep. Like, as far as I'm concerned, if he backs out, he's got till he's coming Saturday. If he doesn't come through on Saturday, it's yours. Yep. But until then Jeez. you got to wait, man. <laughs> it's probably oh, best to live by that rule as hard as it is oh, it yeah. is because well, i mean it'll what, bite you like, if you don't let's say i make it. another two grand selling it out from someone they're gonna go and you lose a, and you lose that other the first guy yeah they're gonna go crap it's on me it's not worth it for two yeah. grand oh. or whatever it is you know like it's just not worth it. i'd rather keep my my reputation so yeah anyway i just had a laugh because i swear to god that's happened to us like 10 times where we have a car like we're waiting for a sale. It finally sells. And then like instantaneously, everyone's like, I want it. And we're like, ah, it's, yep. you know, yep. so um, what was the golf tee in the exhaust? It was just a golf tee that got melted to the exhaust. I don't know how or why. So um, the Lambo is going to San Antonio. So sort of local. Yeah, ish. Yeah, ish. Cool. It's a neat car. Yeah, yeah. I like the black and green combo, but I agree, Greg. It's like black on, you know. <laughs> Neon green. Well, just it's like, it's a Lambo. Be bright, you know. Yeah, Same with yeah, the McLaren should be bright colors, in my opinion. Oh, but. yes. Actually, um, anyone who's done business with us, if you, especially if you've done car business with us and you happen to be watching, we would love more Google reviews or, I think we're also on uh, car gurus and cool. stuff, but um, we we're trying to get like, we want to get some good five-star reviews and stuff. So if you feel the need to uh, yeah. promote us, we would appreciate that. Um, yep. You know, cause it does help our reputation and everything in which we're working on. So you can also um, click like on this video. That would help. Oh yeah. 
Oh my god! Only sixteen likes and a hundred and ten, hundred thirteen people. Jeez. Um. Oh. Also, I think we are all confused about the partnership and does Josh own the building too? It seems Dan makes most of the deals happen and Josh doesn't no. do much but complain. Oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh my That's God. Exactly. Josh reading that from bed. <laughs> uh, so here's the thing. We have a division of labor yeah. and it's based on our skill sets, right? So I do uh, a ton of the filming and therefore I'm in a lot of the videos which is the stuff that you guys see the most of, right? And that's because I've been doing it for, I don't know, what, like eight years now, and Josh has never done it. So why would we have Josh learn that when I already know how to do that? Yep. Josh takes care of so much crap you guys never see on camera. It's not even funny. So, uh, I, yeah, it's just yep. that's just a completely inaccurate statement. Uh, Josh does <laughs> own the building with me as well so he is uh basically an equal partner on that so it's both of our building he is uh he is a part owner in the company as a whole so he's in he's in like yep. he's in and he does a shitload of work <laughs> i think of all the multi-hour like times i've been with josh on like a, a car drive or something only once has he not answered the phone and been doing deals while driving oh. on like a rally or something Dude, his phone <laughs> blows up more than mine and i'm yeah. i'm frustrated with how much mine blows up so <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it, it's um <laughs> <laughs> josh is gonna, gonna go cry himself to sleep on his huge pillow yeah I'm gonna switch that mattress to heat mode tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, I love it. Seriously, he he I couldn't do this without him. I mean, it's not even like that's not even a fair statement. It's so bad. Oh yeah. Um yeah, he does you realize he spends an absurd amount of time doing paperwork. Absurd. I mean, yeah. Anyway. That's what, yeah, apparently I need to just strap a GoPro to his head and just film his day. <laughs> and, then, and then people will be like, oh, and it's like a lot of mundane shit. So, you know, you'll, you'll definitely fall asleep, but he will be busy. <laughs> you could do a, what does your doc fee pay for a video? And it's just POV of Josh doing paperwork. Yeah, right. <laughs> they're, they're doing the four. No, the best is my favorite is every time he does the paperwork for a deal, we send out the, the paperwork. And then like, oh, I'm going to change this or that, or I want to put more money down or this or that. And so he's like, damn it. He has to redo the paperwork. And then something else stages, <laughs> you have to redo it again. He's, just, he's having to do the paperwork like over and over, like seven, eight times. I'm just like, oh man, like, sorry, Josh. Yep. <laughs> uh, good stuff. Uh... <laughs> do your legs hurt Josh from carrying Dan? <laughs> <clears throat> I'm a big guy. Poor Josh, if he has to carry me, that's going to suck. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, we should do that. Okay, what? Oh, Josh put up. We should do that, like strap a camera to his head. Oh, yeah. He almost always deals with the banks. I don't... Mm -hmm. So, like, that's the thing. Josh ran dealerships for over 10 years, so he just knows how to do that. So, again, division of labor, I don't really know how to do that very well. That's why... If you ever buy a car from us, as soon as you like make a deal, I'm like, all right, Josh is going to take care of yeah. you. <laughs> I'm going to transfer you to our finance department. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to transfer you over to Josh. He's going to get yeah. you all set up, and uh, he's going to sell you on some, uh, you know, some aftermarket <laughs> stuff. You don't need like, yeah. uh, you know, steam protection on your seats and uh, undercarriage <laughs> protection. Yep. <laughs> and a warranty that doesn't actually do anything. <laughs> yeah, that's that's Josh's department. <laughs> uh, good i don't make the rules man you just did. how it is <laughs> you can learn how to, you you can go be the face of youtube if you want you know how that's so fun having people just dig into your life and tell you all the horrible things about you it's so fun oh yeah <laughs> it's my favorite <laughs> um hard pass <laughs> yeah exactly um <laughs> yeah oh so our our uh f12 arrived today 
Ooh, cool. Oh. So the first time we've had an F12. The auction F12, huh? Yep, it's an auction F12. It needs some love, but we will cl clean it up and get it ready. And our goal is to make it the cheapest F12 in the country that's not Whoa. messed up. Thanks. You know, like clean, uh, you know, no accident, all that stuff. Because obviously we're not competing with salvage cars and accident cars. But yeah, we, we think we can do that. Um, it will be below two hundred thousand dollars wow mm. for an f12 Damn. super high mileage not super it's it's up there i can't remember was it like 30 something like i think it was low 30s i want to say hmm. like 32 um, what does it need what are the main things that you guys are looking at so uh there's a few things we got to fix on it. nothing nothing major like it's just all like mm -hmm. rinkety ferrari crap right mm -hmm. um yeah thirty thousand miles it needs like the interior needs to be cleaned. Like the leather is just gross. Hmm. Um, that could be good to see if you guys want to make a video. On yeah. That. Yeah. I, I want to do that. Like showing like, this is what happens when you don't take care of your leather and clean it properly. Um, and the other reason it's under 200 is it's, it's a pretty low option car. Like we're not going to hide that. It's uh -huh. like, you know, not hardly any carbon fiber on it. It's just, mm. um, but you know, it's still an F12 though. So got that V12, <laughs> and it already has an IPE exhaust on it. Oh shit! Even better. Yeah, it's a Rosa Corsa tan. So classic, yep. you know, classic Ferrari colors. Um, so we figure putting it under 200, classic colors. That's crazy under 200. It, it just, yeah. yeah, I know, right? Like not much under 200. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. 150. <laughs> <laughs> You're like what? Um, Trade up. <clears throat> yeah, Greg, that that would be a hell of a car to trade up to. That's for sure. For you, Tyler. Yeah. Oh shit! Join that the V twelve was... club. <laughs> I, I mean, you either love or hate the F F twelves, right? Oh, like, I they, they want to kill you. It is oh, a yeah. it is a handful. That yep. car is no joke. <laughs> yeah, Kevin, I still need to get you those pictures. I, I need. I keep forgetting to ask Dan for your number. Who, what? Kevin wants pictures from the grand opening party. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, what was, uh, oh, people kept asking about the, uh, the, uh, the 360, the, oh, auction, yeah. the auction 360. Well, it's it, it's in. <laughs> it is, uh, I don't, I don't want to like, there's a hard problem with that car which is, I don't want to be mean. Yeah. But at the same time, it's not what I would do to any... Because you got to sell it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, also, the guy is actually a fan of the channel, and he's super nice. Mm. And so, like, I don't want to be mean to someone. Right. Like, they, hey, you know what? He made it his. Yes. That's... I, I encourage that. Like, people should definitely make their car their own. <laughs> With the caveat of if you modify a Ferrari, you are never getting that value back. So just accept that. And if you modify it in cosmetic ways, you're limiting the audience who wants to buy it. Yep. Period. Doesn't matter if you do the most tasteful mods ever. Like, like even when we are looking at cars to buy, like if people do something like put a Scud bumper on a 430, we're like, oh, do we want to deal with that? You know, because it's not original, even though it's a scud bumper and uh, just but a hood scoop on a 360. That hell yeah. So we have a um, uh, roof scoop. Yeah. We have a plan for the 360. It it's going to take a lot more effort than anything we've ever done on our YouTube channel. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be. I don't want to say it's going to be amazing because I don't want to like, <laughs> build up your expectations, but I think it's going to be good. It's it's going to be probably a week or two until we can really get to it because we need there's a bunch of moving pieces that all have to come together before we can film it. Yep. The downside is that like that means we can't start working on the car until we're ready to film it because we need the mm. before film. So we obviously want to do a series on unpimping it. <laughs> so we're going to unpimp my ride. That's the, obviously the plan. Yeah. But the, yeah, actually, here's the crazy part: the car itself. Yeah, I bet. Fantastic condition. 
good bones. Right? Well, <laughs> dude, the guy took like he obviously loved that thing. Like it is in such good shape. Yeah. Uh, I mean, holy crap! Like the interior is like super good condition. The paint's in great condition. I mean, it's just it just needs a major and unpimping and a manual. <laughs> <laughs> A re a repimping, you might say. Yeah. Like to yeah. Unpimp it to repimp it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Cha- so that's the one thing on a 360. If you do challenge wheels and like the challenge grill on a 360, everyone loves the challenge yeah. grill because it helps with cooling. It looks good. And it is a reversible mod if you wanted to. I almost wouldn't even call that a mod given how common it is. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's on like half the 360s out there. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just that that one, I don't know why it's just like, it's just accepted. Right. Um, same thing with challenge wheels or like uh scud wheels on a four thirty or something like that. But for some reason, the scud bumper is a little bit weird on the four thirty. Like some people don't like it. Some people do um, scud stripes on the four thirty when it's not a scud. I personally don't like that because it's like kind of in my mind, it's kind of reserved for the scud. Uh, it, it, it came with all sorts of stuff. It did. Come <laughs> with, it did actually. The stainless steel drinking mug is in the car. Oh my god! It's even got the seat belt covers. Yes. It's got. It's got the arms. The center armrest. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a backup camera, right? It does. What do you, do you guys have? You seen if those do anything to the resale to help or hurt? I don't think it like hurt, aftermarket I don't think it helps or hurts in those old cars. Okay. I mean, it's a nice thing, but no one's yeah. like, Oh, I'm not going to buy it because it has a backup yeah. camera. And no one's like, I'm going to buy it because it has a backup camera. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's possible, right? If Schumacher, if Schumacher, like Michael Schumacher signed it, it might help. Maybe. Oh, yeah. He would need to modify it with his signature, not you modifying it with his signature. Good point. <laughs> Big Good difference. Point. Yeah, and yeah. it's kind of hard to get his signature these days. Yeah, I think that's pretty much a done deal now. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> Unless you have a time machine. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, um, that's where we at. So both 430s are gone. One of them shipped out today, cool. which um, I, have to, I have to say, like, you know, like, one of the things I really like is when we get to sell cars to first time supercar owners, you know, first time Ferrari owners. And when like, we're really able to help them get the right car and whatever. And they're just super excited about it. Like it's contagious. Like it it gives you energy. Like it gives, it brings energy to me. And we sold the one for 30 to this first time owner. And the guy is just, super cool super nice um and he's so excited and i'm nice. like i'm excited for him like i can't wait to see i guarantee you he's gonna send me a picture of him with the car and you know it's just it, it got picked up today and i sent him a picture of it getting loaded and he's just like oh my god you know <laughs> just, it's like yes oh, that's cool <laughs> it's i love coming. that it's so cool so those are the two red ones yep so the other one's still in the shop um we're finishing up some, the, the person put a deposit on it and then, uh, had us do some stuff to like, uh, new, we had to refinish the wheels, new tires, um, fixing a few things, you know, just that's, that's kind of stuff that we can do when people want it is like, Hey, you know, like we want, I want to buy the car, but I want to change these things or whatever. And it's like, okay, sure. We'll work with you on that. So that's what we're doing. Um, I am, Let's see. I am drinking. Uh, it's an Antonori. I forgot what it's called. It's not an expensive wine. It's like a fifteen bucks a bottle. But it's Italian and it's red. That's all. Dangerous. Italian red. And it's an Antonori, which is my favorite vineyard. There you go. That's all we care about. Yeah. Italian and red. Yeah. So Tom had a good question. If you scroll down. Mm, where Tom H, would you buy a 458, 488, or F12? He's upgrading mm. from his R8 soon. I mean, so like, I think you're really 
They're all different beasts, right? They're all totally different, right? Do you want a Grand Tour? Then the F12 yeah. is the right answer. Do you want the like classic Ferrari high pitch scream naturally aspirated 9,000 RPM car? Then a 458. Do you want fast as balls? Then get the 488. Yep. Front engine, mid engine, driving yeah, feel. Engine, it, it, there's, I mean, that's kind of, it's one of those that like, when we've had clients um, doing consultations ask for similar questions, like, and I'm like, honestly, I can't tell you. You, you got to figure out what you. <laughs> this is a want. hard question. Yeah. If you're well, in the position like, to to have to make that decision, it's it's totally each each person is going to be different, right? Because mm -hmm. yeah. some person might think the four five eight is totally uncomfortable, and so they mm -hmm. want the the V twelve Grand Tour, and other people might think the V twelve is just a big car and this isn't a sports mm -hmm. car like to me personally that's kind of how i feel i like the v12 cars but they're too big i just don't like big yeah. cars like that it's crazy i like would i lusted over an f12 for many years it was my dream and then spending time with you dan just hearing like your 458 and then getting or getting more into racing and just like driving feel i just now i'm i'm mid-engine Team yep. mid engine, like and just like F twelve is beautiful, but it is so big. Yeah, yeah I just, haven't driven it. It so. does want to kill like, you. It does want yeah. to kill you. Yeah. That's yeah. For sure. I mean, it's it's so much power. Yeah, like it's not it's not slow, but it just doesn't have the same handling feel, and it, and it just doesn't feel as nimble or um, agile as like the four five eight or the four eight eight. And like the four five eight and four eight eight from a driving perspective, feel very similar, except for the engine. Like the 488, it's, it's more comfortable. It's got a much improved suspension. Like if you go over like a rough road in the 488, it's butter smooth. Yeah. Like you can't even tell versus the 458 will beat you up a little bit. It's still a bit, you know, older suspension design or whatever. But the like putting them in anger, they're pretty close to the same as far as handling. But then you stomp on the gas pedal and you're just like, my God, the 488 just pulls like a freight train. It's just crazy. So, yeah, yeah. but it doesn't have that sound. So it's like, okay, you know, yeah, uh, you know, and it's got the turbos. And so do you, are you okay with the turbo spooling up and all that sort of it's, stuff? It's pretty linear until you it is. tune it though, right? When you, yeah, yeah, it's extremely linear. Like you almost can't even tell it's turboed. Yeah. Um, and then you tune it and then you're like, oh, there they are. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> are here. <laughs> to me, I'm like, I want that. Like if you're going to have turbos, I want to tell it's got turbos. Hell yeah. That's half the fun of it is I was like, oh shit, now I'm still inside of it. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I used to hate the 48. And then once I drove 48s with a tune yeah. and an exhaust, I'm like, ah, I can live with this over a 458 in some conditions. So yeah. I could, I could, tolerate that yeah that first 48 you bought that i drove in california was yeah. like this is fun it's nice but okay it just like, yeah it didn't quite check all the right boxes bone stock. yeah yeah bone stock it was good it was really good and like the driving quality is definitely improved oh yeah like noticeably over the 458 but and and the power is just like absurd compared to the 458 but then when you drive the the black 488 that we modified and put the exhaust on, then you're like, okay, this thing's an animal. Yep. Now I'm excited. Like, this is the car I want. And I guess that's, but that's the thing. That's me. Like, I I can't take what I like and extrapolate that into, will you like what I like? Yeah. So that's actually one of the hardest things and one of the most common things that we deal with in in consultation calls is trying to trying to figure out what it is the person really wants, like what are their actual goals, what's going to make them really happy. And I've changed people's minds into what I think is a better car for them multiple times. And I've gotten many emails where they're like, thank you so much for convincing me to buy whatever, because I think this is much better, you know, blah, 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 all that stuff. Yep. So it's just, I mean, that's like for me to get an F12, it's like I already had a front engine, grand tour car with the f-type it's not yep. the whole different league yeah right but yeah. i'm enjoying the mid-engine you know mm -hmm. snappy stuck to the ground yeah you know mid-engine yeah. supercars right now so. yeah the yeah. balance and the feeling yep. you know just mm -hmm. hard to beat yep 
Yeah. <clears throat> Oh yeah, yeah the the nine thirty Doctor Killers. Mm. So my brother had an eighty nine nine thirty Turbo, which was the only year that had the five speed um, mm. of the nine thirties. And it's funny because it was like it was it's a it's a on off switch for the turbo. It's like nothing, nothing, nothing. Like five six thousand RPMs, hundred percent boost. <laughs> wow, it was just crazy. Uh I have no idea what the Revology Mustangs are. Nope. Sorry. I've never heard of that. You'll have to give me a clue. I'm and yeah, and to be fair, I'm not saying the F12 is bad in any way. I'm just saying it's not the car I want. Yeah. It's not oh, it's, it's badass, yeah. It's yeah, it's crazy cool. And the V12 sounds incredible. Like just epic sounding car. Oh, they're Brand new reproduction classics. Okay. Oh, that's like cool. they're taking like a '60s Mustang and yep, like resto mod almost. Yeah, like super performance style. Yeah. '65 through '68. Huh. Cool. Yeah, that's badass. Yeah, seriously, dude. The the black '48 we had. Yeah, Harry's car is just. It was insanely loud too. <laughs> it's so sick. It's it is it's it's one of my favorite cars we've had in the shop. I still love it. And I hate black cars, but it looks so good blacked out like that. It was just fantastic. Yeah. <clears throat> Josh is sick tonight. He's in the comments. He's in the he's, he's hanging buried out under the, the sheets. Yep. You're here with us and chatting with Josh Hill on Facebook. That's funny. Nice. Hmm. Nice. Um, what car has someone wanted and you reject and re redirected them hmm. to? Um, I've had actually that exact conversation with people before where they're like, oh, I want a, I want an F12. I want an F12. And then I was like, ask him about it. I'm like, do you want the Grand Tour? Or I've also had the, the opposite where someone's like, oh, I'm torn between a, four five eight and a front engine v12 like a 599 and you know like i talked to them i'm like and i found out like they had like a knee problem and i was like <laughs> mm, like i don't know that you want to get in and out of a four five eight like it's a really low car you know i've had other times where people are just big human beings like they're six foot something you know six foot five or whatever i'm like oh and they're like oh i want to buy a lamborghini huracan spider and i'm like no, don't. <laughs> you're gonna be I'm like, looking you know, over the windshield right yeah, i'm like you, you don't want that car um like you want it in theory you don't want it in actuality because you are going to be miserable sitting in that thing so i mean it's it's been all over the board uh we you know i've oh geez i should look at the actual data but i'm pretty sure i've done about 300 consultations now wow if not mm -hmm. more so, I mean, it's, it's hard to remember everything. And that's what it's funny. Cause people will send me an email like, Oh, you remember me? And I'm like, mm, no, <laughs> but then they're like, show me a picture of their car or something like that. I'm like, ah, yes, <laughs> I do remember that. But like, it's hard <laughs> keeping track of all of that. That's, that's a lot over the last few years. Um, <laughs> oh, interesting question. 355s, MP412C, Gyros, and 360s are all around the same price. What should oh. I do? That is Not, a huge Are you variance. really thinking about it, Hugh? Not the 355. Well, uh, <laughs> maybe, right? It, Why that over a 360, though? I'd rather a 360. I, I mean, me too, but some people want that classic wedge look with yep. the, right. the pop-up headlights and the sound. Fair. But if you want that, get a Gardo. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a wedge for sure. They have pop up headlights? No, but it's a wedge. <laughs> and so, like, this is the kind of questions that we sometimes get in consultations that it's really like, okay, let's go through what it is you really want out of the car. Yeah. Right. So, I basically I start that off with, like, tell me your goals. What are your goals for this car? You know, my favorite is like, they'll list, <laughs> no offense, Tyler, they'll list like McLaren. I want McLaren. So, I'm like, what's, the, what's your number one goal? And they're like, I, I don't want it to depreciate. I'm like, doors go up though. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you have McLarens on the yeah. list. 
Well, like, if you get a 12 seed today, it's pretty much rock bottom. That's so. true. That's true. Yeah, actually. Very of course, true. you say that, and then it keeps dr- like digging itself down. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that's one of the hardest things is people who are only concerned about the valuation. And uh, like, th- those consultations are very difficult because I'm yeah. like, okay, I don't think you're in the right mindset to buy one of these cars because you're going to, you're going to get screwed. Yep. And then you're going to bitch about it. And you're going to become one of these people that go online and be like, I hate Ferraris because blah, blah. And it's like, well, because you, all you cared about was making money and you bought a car as an investment. And that's a terrible idea. Yeah. That yeah. needed a major and you didn't expect a $10,000 expense. Right. And, yeah. Well, and then my favorite is they're like, Oh, I want to buy a fry as an investment. You know? Okay. I'll, they're like, I want to buy a four five eight, and I want it to keep its value. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, my budget's one hundred and sixty thousand. I'm like, so you're gonna buy the cheapest, beat up, poorly maintained piece of shit four five eight on the market, and you think it's gonna retain value? That's not how this works. <laughs> yep. I'm like, no, it's a terrible idea. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, in that list, the 12 C is probably the fastest, oh, most capable. Far. So by if far. that's what you're looking for, great. But Exactly. Right. Yeah. If you want performance, no question, 12 C. Yeah. If you want to get attention, no question, Gardo. Yeah. <laughs> if you are looking at retaining value, I would say right now the 360 is probably the best bet. I feel like the 355s are overpriced. So I think if you buy a 355 right now, you're going to lose your ass. Hmm. Um. If you bought one a year ago, you'd be great. <laughs> so it, it, I like to me, the three sixties are kind of holding and going up s- still. So, mm-hmm. um, how's the cop car coming along? Well, to be totally honest, um, don't know. It's yeah. at another person's shop. Oh yeah, it's getting fixed. We just punted it to someone else who probably can do a better job and know these cars a lot better than us. And it's one of those where we had to look at the, the ROI, right? Like yeah. do Josh and I want to spend a bunch of time probably pulling the engine, rebuilding it or whatever it needs on a yeah. $2,000 cop car? <laughs> or do we want to work on like Ferraris and whatever that we can actually make some real money? Yeah. On? And it's so. not like you're going to make good content on that whole journey. If you're no, ready. rebuilding it, no one. Yeah. So like, that was the thing. We published those videos. They didn't get good views. So, okay, we're not going to show it in the, like, I'm not going to spend a bunch of DIY videos on the car when it's not getting views. Yep. Yep. Like we, we gave it a couple of, a couple of videos to test it. Didn't work. So <laughs> off you go. But that doesn't mean we don't want it to be fixed and, and have it be placing cameos in other videos. Right. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> Yes, Michael, I do have my Ferrari boxer shorts on. Yeah. It's not for you to see. I <laughs> uh, love my F12. The only concern with auction cars is they've been kicked there by a dealer who saw more stuff wrong with it than it's worth. That's totally not true. Um, that's, that's that's just regurgitating what you've seen on Ferrari chat. Um, <laughs> we've bought auction cars, and they've been phenomenal. And then we've bought other auction cars, and they're absolute turds. So it just does. you just don't know. Um, a lot of the Ferrari like dealers, I think what happens is a lot of dealerships get traded in Ferraris. They don't know what to do with it. Like if they're not a Ferrari dealer or not a supercar dealer and they send them to auction, like, or they just don't know how to like, how to actually assess these cars, um, or to bring them back up to a good standard. I mean, it's not that hard if they know what they're doing. And so I think a lot of these dealerships buy these cars and they don't know how to deal with it right like it needs like the car we bought it needs some work well josh and i are fully capable of doing the work on the thing that it needs so yep you know anyway i just i think it's i think it's kind of strange that yeah i mean that seems to be your biggest advantage i wonder how many other small scale dealers are doing that I think a lot of small scale dealers are buying auction cars and then not touching them. Yeah. And then they're marketing them as if it's perfect because everyone always assumes a Ferrari is perfect. And that's where, that's where you get the, the bad like reviews or the bad, whatever you want to call it, bad mojo out there where people are like, Oh, I went and 
checked out this fry and it was a turd or, you know, I bought it and it needed all this work. And it's like, well, yeah, because you bought it from some shady dealership who doesn't like, you know, they have like low res five pictures online and, you know, <laughs> yep. and you bought it sight in the scene or whatever. And you're, and somehow you're confused that you got screwed on this. Like, uh, okay. You know, whose, whose fault is that? Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, JS360, I'm not buying a $3 million car, especially in Austin. Have you seen the way people drive here? Yeah. Oh, right. Shit. Oh my gosh. No, thanks. No, it would be a cool car, but yeah, no, no. never. Mm -mm. Well, never say never. Never right? say never. But, yeah. How do you, how do you, you wouldn't have got the McLaren if you said never. That's right. right? Yeah. <laughs> so my personal viewpoint on the big auctions is unless you're trying to buy some rare car, it's never worth it because the, the auction fees and all that stuff make them so astronomically expensive. It's just never worth it. And you get inevitably some drunk dumbass <laughs> bidding on the car that doesn't know anything about it. So I feel like as a buyer, I would never really buy a, a big auction car. It just has, I have no interest in them. Like I have yet to see any car that we, like we've looked at plenty of cars at some of the big auctions. There's never once been a car that we're like, oh man, wish we would have bought a bid on that thing. It's like, pfft, doesn't happen. So as a seller, again, you might get a slightly higher value because some drunk dumbass bid it up, but their auction fees are so huge that you probably could have sold it to us or yourself or whatever and probably made just as much or more yep so it is super curious at those auctions when they have a serious enough buyer that they'll actually let them sit in the car and turn it on and yeah it, it's like all right this person's dropping you know they it's listed as expected million five or something it's like okay well, yeah yeah cool like you said if you're buying a super rare or whatever car but if you're yeah. buying like a regular you know, like we, we watched like a bunch of Ferrari 360s and whatever go up at Meekum, uh, at, uh, uh, Monterey Car Week, and none of them were good deals. Yep. None of them. And so it's just like, yeah. <clears throat> Ooh, if you would want to own a Pista, oh, cool. a Speciale, a Scud, or a Challenge Stradale. Yes. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All? If I had the money, that would be the perfect garage. Hell yeah. <laughs> that's, that's it. I'm done. I won. I won the game of life. <laughs> there are people out there who do have that. You're right. That, yeah. That's the dream right there. Uh, I I don't know. I really oh. love the Scud. I really love the Speciale. I really love the Pista. Challenge Stradale is pretty cool. Yeah. It's kind of how I feel. I think I would do a Speciale Aperta. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only yeah. a million. Yeah, I I do love the pistas though. That that yeah. probably be my first. Well, you on drove one, right, Tyler? Yeah. Jocko yeah. was kind enough yeah. to let me hit the rev limiter a couple times. Let's see. <laughs> Going across what? the bridge, right? Yep. <laughs> what have we seen as the current mark rate for current converted 430 Spider mm -hmm. with sub twenty thousand miles? One depends on the condition, 150 to 175. It's a very big range right now. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> oh, thank you. We're, we're trying to, to do our best. <laughs> trying. We're not always perfect. Can you explain the kind of people that buy a high end fry from Brian Jessel Toyota? It's, I'm always curious about, about like a, like we were trying to buy a, a Ferrari from a Hyundai dealership. And I'll tell you, every time we've tried to buy a Ferrari from like a, you know, like regular car dealership, it's always a shit show. Always. And they don't know their ass from their foot. And it's just, it's a nightmare. It's so bad. It's yep. just pain in the ass so i don't know i have no clue who ends up buying those cars but i'm pretty sure they get screwed <laughs> yeah you see random 720s at these dealerships in the middle of nowhere america it's yeah. like they're 
what are they doing with that car? <laughs> oh, and this is the most true statement ever. People think top end cars are perfect, and they are no, not. Not at all. Never. Like that. That's. I actually one of the things I always prepare people for in a lot of our cons- consultations is I'm like, just so you know, like when that Ferrari arrives, the paint's gonna be shit. <laughs> oh, you're talking even new. Oh yeah, even brand new. Yeah, but even you know, especially yeah. when they're used and someone didn't know how to yeah. wash it properly and whatever, and it's just like, yeah. I'm worried I'm putting swirl marks on. I'm doing my best to wash it, yeah. right? But I, <laughs> if you put some, I feel on, like I'm you... seeing more swirl. <laughs> you put a, yeah, do a paint correction after it yeah. every few years. You know, that's something. Yeah, I'll worry about in a few years. Yep. Yeah. Your buddy just sold an 85 Monte Carlo at Meekum for $39,000. What the? Hey, Josh, what's what year is that money that we just got? I Oh, yeah. I forgot to tell you guys. We, got, <laughs> yeah, what? we just got a Monte Carlo. <laughs> Did you pay 39000 for it? <laughs> no. Oh. no. I'm serious, though. This is not a joke. <laughs> Video coming soon. Long story. Oh, yeah, I love it. What about DuPont Registry? I mean, that's only like only reason I'd ever go there is if I'm looking for like the creme de la creme. It's a uh, great magazine growing up. Yeah, it's they're always overpriced. Always nice 2001 yeah. pace car. Cool. Um, no, we pace still have a vacation. NASCAR. Sorry. Oh, it's an 01. Yeah, it's the Monte Carlo we got is a pace car. It's it's something. Pace car for what? <laughs> like for just NASCAR or something? NASCAR or something? Okay. Yeah, it must know. have been NASCAR, yeah. I I almost bought one of those before I went to college because they were super cheap. They were like $12,000. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I remember Jocko had his brand new car that he bought from Ferrari and Josh looks at it and he's just like, Hey, your car has been repainted. And he's like, what are you talking about? It's brand new. It's I don't, I'm the one owner. And Josh's like, um, yeah. Yeah. He's not that happened in shipping. Oh, no. Is that the, uh, the four, five, eight, the yep. gray one. Yep. Ferraris, man. Jeez. <laughs> 360 is, is it 360 up for, Meaning, is it? Did you put garage? it away for the season? It's tucked tucked away, but I mean, <clears throat> I mean, really, what that means is it's got the tender hooked up and uh, a window cracked to let some air in, and the garage is nice and climate controlled. It's sixty five in there. It's nice. No, yeah, that's fine. Inflated the tires a bit more, but I mean, yeah, yeah, it's all you can much do. More than that, it's probably warmer up there than it is here. So. <laughs> It's it's the same. It's nice in my garage. I'll tell you that. I mean, it's still like in shambles in terms of like I need to put drywall up and stuff, but it's climate controlled. The car is happy. Yep. I officially yeah. hit the garage AC over to heat last night. I'm like, ah, yes. This is yeah. Nice. I'm going to turn mine on. Stable. Before, yes. Uh, I put that in oh. as well. Fuel stabilizer. Yeah. That's a good move. Good that's move. the other thing. Oh, I got to I got to add uh, diesel anti gel shit. Yeah, they don't put that in the fuel here, do they? Nope. I got to <laughs> put that in. Last time it got that cold, I couldn't start my truck. <laughs> yep. That was, uh, la- I say last year, as in 2022 Christmas, when yeah, I was yeah, flying was- out to go to Christmas for our family, it was when it was like 17 degrees in Austin. And the fuel trucks at the airport gelled mm. to bring the airplane's jet fuel. <laughs> so yep. It was yep. delayed three hours because they couldn't start the fuel truck. Yeah, I I could not. It, I think it's um. I want to say it was twenty two degrees or eighteen degrees where diesel gels. I think it's eighteen. Maybe it's eighteen. Off the top of my head, I don't remember. And so with wind chill, you know, if it's twenty something degrees and you got a low wind chill, it can cause it to gel. Because the like you know, especially at our old house, I parked my truck outside. Oh yeah. So the wind would just blow right under it. So yeah, I went out there and tried to start it, and it. Would not, uh, just could not oops. start. So the foam cannon is clogged. What, what tells you that that's could be possible? I've always noticed my foam cannon hasn't blown like like. Are you using the um, pressure washer? Yeah, yeah, pressure so, washer and a um. Just the the I mean, top I, thing. 
I do. I adjust that and the um, yeah, the top thing There's, and the, the top um, thing and the spray thing. Yeah, hmm. the I top do. thing you want it like letting in very little air, so it gets it really or is it a lot yeah. of air? I Whatever forget. it is, I, I, my my pressure washer sucks. I hate it. That could be what it is too. Yeah, it could be could be the wrong orifice for the pressure washer. Yeah, I don't know. I, agree, I know, like I if you get it just right, it gets a real. Also, you're adding a ton of soap. I, yeah, because it's like almost like a quarter soap to water. Like a, just, uh, put, just put the soap in straight. It's fine. A spring, <laughs> <laughs> a springtime yeah. thing. Because I have noticed. Because yeah, sometimes I'll be spraying soap will come out, and then just straight water will go through it, and then hmm. it'll go back to soap. Yeah, it might be Ooh. clogged then. Your voice is dreamy oh. for radio, Tyler. It's not me. It's this. <laughs> it's, I would say it, that's why I have a big mic. I say if if I get real close and talk real soft, yeah. it actually sounds pretty good. Yeah. Well, when you have when you have radio mics, it makes you sound like you're on the radio. Did you know that for a brief period of time, I had an internet radio station <laughs> and it was number one in the world? Yeah. I got a mic. I need to set this up. That's how oh, lame yeah. I am. Ooh. Yeah. I have no idea. That will actually help a lot. It's given to me. I've just yep. been lazy. I haven't set it up. Um, do we think 720s are going to come way down this year? I, I think they're not coming down a whole lot more. They're down a lot already. Yeah, they're already down a lot. But yeah, we'll see with the 750 finally getting to customers what's going to happen. I mean, the problem is they're getting so cheap. Like you're seeing lots of them around like 200 in below 200 and it's so yeah. much car for two hundred thousand yeah. dollars it's a crazy amount of car for that money even at 250 it's a crazy amount of car yeah. for that money yeah yeah i don't know yeah hmm. Ooh, negative seven yeah See, you can keep is, that have fun this is why i no longer live up there <laughs> Uh, clean yeah, out with sea foam. Oh God! My parents yeah. debated retiring here or someplace warmer, and then they picked Nebraska. And so I make fun of them every chance I get when it's like, "Oh, we got another foot of snow." Come on. <laughs> That's on you. I'm done with. They're that. in Western, right? Yeah. Nope. I'm uh, done. Just done with that crap. Like, we got 15 inches just last weekend, but then it hit 50 degrees here and basically no snow is left. Yep. Ugh, no. I'm done. No more snow. You acclimate to the heat a lot quicker than you acclimate to cold. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, if you're driving your car and it's 105 degrees out and your car breaks down on the side of the highway, you're not going to die. Yeah, it's going to suck. If you're driving your car... And it's negative seven degrees out and snowing balls and your car breaks down the side of the highway. You could actually die. <laughs> and that happens every year. That is true. Yep. Yep. <laughs> People don't still don't know how to drive in the snow. Oh, Otherwise, no, man. They never will. I mean, no, thank you. Mm. Um, yeah, actually, you know, um, we do want to start doing... That was one of our goals for this year is to start doing some events at the stub. Um, the biggest limiting factor is just parking. We don't have a ton of parking available at the stub. We can fit probably about 10 cars, maybe 12. Um, so I think we want to do, um, I think some of the events we want to do are going to have to be like invite only or, you know, like you got an RSVP and when the list is full, it's full. And then people are going to give me shit. Oh, you're not going to let me come because the RSVP. And it's like, yeah, because you're going to be parking in dirt and then you're going to be mad because yep. your Ferrari is parked on a, like, you know, in the bushes <laughs> <laughs> or in a grass, like, you know, bottomed out with like cow dung next to it or whatever. I don't know. So, um, but yes, we want to do some some sort of stuff. Uh, we're not sure what yet. Uh, we want to do some drives. We've talked about having some happy hours, just like an open house happy hour where we just, you know, come hang out and have a drink with us and stare at some cars and shoot the shit. Like, I think that's, I like yeah. that stuff. Like, yeah, I, I enjoy cool. that. Quickest oil change competition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Line up two four thirties. Yeah, give everyone a Lamborghini <laughs> with oh, seven dream flags. 
Like, have fun. Don't miss one. Yeah. If you can drain a Dodge, you can drain a Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and RSVP is probably what's necessary for most events that we're going to have just because of the limiting parking. And we'll probably what we'll probably have to do is like try it with 10 people. Okay, did everyone fit? Now try it with 12 people. Does everyone fit? Okay, try it with 14. Ah, oh, two cars didn't fit. Okay, go back to 12. Yep. You know, like we just don't know what it is yet. And I guess it also depends how everyone parks. I mean, the grand opening had how many RSVPs and that went went um, fine we did a right? hundred people i suspect about 75 showed up yeah and we Over had the off-site the we had the off-site parking with the shuttle yeah and i think probably about at least 10 to 15 cars parked off-site yeah and there was what 50 people there at, at most at one time Maybe, maybe 50 maybe. people at the most. Yeah, maybe 50. The people's people. not the concern, yeah, right? It's the like cars. I, yeah. We could easily fit 50 people inside the building. It's the, yeah. you know, parking 50 people's cars. Yeah. yeah. That road well, is not great. No. I mean, Greg got a flat, so. <laughs> I don't know if that was from the road. It wasn't from the road. <laughs> Yeah, probably wasn't from the road either. <laughs> we have we have discussed um, again. This is like all we need more money to do this, but like expanding the parking lot, adding more asphalt or yeah. whatever, even just putting down like um, compacted gravel or something, just so that people could park cars more. Because I don't care to stare at a bunch of grass and mow it. Like, <laughs> you know, say whatever. <laughs> so, but we're not quite there yet. It was a nail. Okay, that sucks. Fair enough. Well, yeah. But yeah, we, we definitely are very interested in um, doing some stuff like that. Right now, it's like, you know, January and February are not great months for Texas to do car events. No. So March is also kind of questionable just because there's so much rain. So we're probably, you know, thinking like we start trying to do some stuff in like April and May. But yeah, um, that is definitely on our agenda for sure. Heck yeah. So, yeah. And also, like, there's the, um, uh, what is it, ASC group on Facebook. We want to invite them to come out. We want to invite the uh, FCA to come out. So, that's going to be a tricky one. Oh, yeah. On your uh, road. Yeah, I don't know how many. Again, it's like how many people are going to come. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, you make things limited, and then people feel exclusive, and they want to sign have, up and let shoot. people kind of use the driveway and then pull in the building and then like around to the through each <laughs> each garage, right? Just park inside. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, the Austin Grand Tour was okay. It was a riot. Uh, it was kind of a shit show. Which one was, was that? A huge shit show, but. Um, it was organized by ASE and some other thing. The, the ten, the ten group or whatever yeah, it's called. The exotic um, network. That's they were supposed to limit it to sixty cars, and like a hundred showed up. Ish, yeah. So, um, just to throw this out there, if any of you ever organize an event that's a driving event, and you end up with more than like uh, ten to fifteen cars. Um, don't make organized gas station stops <laughs> and don't make rally points and don't expect the group to stay together. It does not work. Yeah. Especially through a city, especially if you go into a city. So just putting that out there. Yep. So, it, it was definitely you your, your car, Tyler. No, I, I just rode with Josh. Um, oh, okay. it was, it was fun going down Mopac with a group of cars, but yeah, um, I'm, I've done that now. We don't need to do that again. <laughs> I will say that was the most fascinating drive through Austin yep. I've ever done. Like, really? I don't know if it was like everyone was sleeping in that day or what, but there was no one on Mopac. Yeah. No one. So a hundred supercars just took over nope. Mopac. There was no, no traffic, no cops. Yep. All I know is I don't think I went below 90 the entire time. And I, and I was like, I'm just like, I was, it was so funny because I got stuck 
at a light or whatever it was. So by the time I got on the Mopac, there was this huge gap and I'm at the front. Oh shit. So I'm the first car. So I'm like, oh, okay. Like I'm thinking to myself, the first group of people are dead. You know, so I'm in the second group behind the first group. The first group is gone. And I know what cars are in that first group. And I'm like, yeah, they're um, probably averaging like 130. Yeah, you're not catching them. <laughs> I'm not catching up to them, but they're definitely getting the police called on them. <laughs> so will the police come back and get around to Mopac by the time I'm going by? Mm. Not if you speed up. <laughs> right, right. So maybe go faster. <laughs> it was, that was intense. Where uh, were you driving? I was in my GT40. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, was, I never saw our top speed, but it was um, it was Mexico worthy. That's for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I was up there. That's definitely the fastest I've driven. That's the fastest I've gotten through Austin ever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Like basically from the top of Mopac to the very end, where it dead ends. That was the fastest I've ever done that, and probably will <laughs> ever do that. Yeah, there was definitely some stupidity going on. Um, I had fun. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. I just kind of did my own pace and I didn't really care. I like, I'm, I'm a crotchety old guy now. Right. I go on these drives. And I'm just like, I don't care what the group, like what the group says they're going to do. I'm going to do my own thing. And if other people want to follow me, they can. And if other people want to go blasting on by me and be a dumbass, they are welcome to do so. I'm going to, you know, yep. I'm going to make sure that I get to see my kid tonight. Yeah. <laughs> we weren't in the viral video of, Two Lamborghinis almost getting hit. So that's oh, cool. there was a powerful video from the event. Oh, <laughs> that was that was close. That and was like, very close. I hate to say it, but you can't really fault that driver because no. they came up on him so fast. Yep. So yeah, why they why they shifted lanes so aggressively is unnecessary. Unnecessary, but. I get it when all of a sudden you're trying to make a lane change and there's a car that wasn't there two seconds ago and you, yeah, you have to, you know, yeah. Well, and then the problem is they freaked out that person. So then they overcorrected, yep. which went right towards the other car. Yep. Mm. Like they split, they, the two Lamborghinis split a car. Yeah. So they passed it almost simultaneously left and right. So the car was trying to move left as the car on the left went around it. So the car on the left had to swerve really hard so it was an SUV. So then they veered hard right, right towards the other Lamborghini, which yep. was passing them right at that moment. So then that Lamborghini is up on the shoulder. Yep. And the shoulder like, was ending with construction. So he was hard yeah. on the brakes to get back. It was just like, whoo. Yeah, I, I agree, Greg. I can't believe they posted it. Like it's. All right, you got to share thing. it after this. I got to see it. <laughs> it's just, a story might be gone. I don't know. It was a story. Yeah, it was probably a story. It might be I, real. I, I, I wouldn't have posted it if. Yeah, that was not a proud moment. And like, no. Anyway, <clears throat> can we have your sub slash guests on the next one? It was fun. I'm not sure what you were talking about. Talk about the live. Yeah. What are you What are you talking about here? Phyllis said, "Who? Sorry, yawn. I don't think you've ever had a sub on the live. You did that one time after post live. We've had some post live oh, stuff. Post -live. Yeah. Mm hmm." New Hampshire Motor um, Speedway. Nice. nice. I raced there. Yeah. Oh. It'll be fun. Very cool. They don't let you shift, right? Extreme Experiences Auto? Mm hmm Okay. I did a few of those. That was but, the worst part. Yeah, just be prepared for that. No Chris. flappy paddles. Yeah. I did, yeah. I did a Formula Car 1, 2 at New Hampshire Motor Speedway around the Oval, and you couldn't be on throttle around the, the bends, around the turns. You could be on full throttle on the straight. Huh. This was like 10 years ago. You had to let up before the corner. I mean, I guess it made sense for because it's open to the public. But yeah, um, the funny thing is yeah. like they're like, oh, you can't shift the paddles. And they're like, and I asked them why. And they're like, oh, because like we have too many people destroying the transmissions. So I'm like, yeah. the computer won't let you put it into a gear that's not appropriate. Yeah. Like. Right. If you try and pull downshift and it won't like it can't go to lower gear because it'll over rev, it won't go into the lower gear. So I don't mm. know. Whatever. Anyway, those things it, it's fun. Try it, but just your expectations, keep them low. Yeah. It'll still be a riot. <clears throat> yeah. They the funny thing was the the time I did it, the 
first instructor I got was like a dickhead, like really strict, whatever. Second instructor is like, so have you done any sort of track days or whatever? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I've done a ton of it. He's like, all right, I'm just going to shut up and let you go. Nice. And I was like, oh, thank you. So I just hauled ass. And I like, I, he was like, okay, you can pass these guys. I'm like, thanks. You know, and- I wonder what they would do if you, if you put it into manual mode anyway and just started hauling ass. Well, like- I tapped the paddles the first like yeah. corner and he immediately says, no, 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 you can't do that. And pushes the auto button. Okay. Aww. So there, that's, that's my answer. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, you can't shift it yourself. I'm like, watch me. (laughs) Why wasn't this in the description? (laughs) Come on. Give me a break. Whatever. Anyway. It is what it is. Hey, you know what? That experience was the reason I bought a 458. Nice. So, I mean. There you go. So it might be really expensive for you, Christopher. (laughs) Yeah. That $300 drive might turn into $150,000, $175,000. But I know a guy. Got right over here. Yeah, I got a guy. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Uh, Steve, that video is on Instagram. I, I don't know if. Yeah, it was Instagram. The, yeah. the shenanigans. I doubt they put it on YouTube. No. <laughs> um. Oh, so we think we're going to try and do our first. Um, I'm thinking maybe of calling it the fly and drive series. All right. Fly out to an auction. Don't hit a one way ticket. Buy a car and drive it home. So good. I think I think about doing that pretty soon. I don't know. What do you think you fly out together? Or are you guys going to do uh, each other's? Maybe, maybe do yeah, sometimes, make a race. Alone, sometimes both be who knows yeah go go together and make it a race who can buy the car and get back the soonest (laughs) would you take the gt40 on a rally yeah sure although there's one big problem with doing that which is there's no trunk or anything so if you're going on like a multi-day rally you can't fit a suitcase yeah, you'd uh-huh. have a support car. You'd have to have a support car, um, or you pack your passenger seat. But if you're going yeah. with someone, then that basically means you can't. Um, you but really can't. You would. You would probably want to bring earplugs or headphones, because um, oh, yeah. multiple days of that car for multiple hours a day is going to cause you some serious hearing damage. Yes. Um, yeah, it'd be tough. That's why everyone's like, you guys need to do the tour of Colorado again. You should bring the GT40. And I'm like, ah, uh. <laughs> like, uh, I'm not sure I want to do that. Like, Leave it at I'll... your brother's house and then drive something else. The tour. <laughs> right. <laughs> the other thing I thought about is let's say we did the Telluride place. I don't think the GT40 could get into that, that uh, parking garage. Oh, yeah, probably could. Really? Like I literally that's think a, it, would, it would bottom out and get stuck. That's a good point. Because hmm. that's that, a really good that, point. It's really steep and sharp, like you know, thing. Yeah. Wow. Wait, in BMW news, did you hear that Studio acquired EAG? Huh? What are you talking about? Who's Studio? Yeah. Why is it BMW? News? And why is that BMW news? Yeah. Uh, huh. Come on, Greg. Yeah, give us the give us the beans. What's going on here, Greg? <laughs> I'm curious on that one. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, I was on a smoking tire clip, but the studio dealership has acquired Enthusiast uh, Auto. <laughs> there you go. Ah. Well played, sir. Just being yep. cheeky. <laughs> well played. Yeah. Okay. It's not April first yet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's what it was. <laughs> Dang it! I love it. I'm all out. Aww. Yep. All right. So here's a question for YouTube. Hmm. The defenders that going to be on four years this September. So do I? Get something else. 
Mm. Yes. Drive without a warranty. <laughs> get a lander or warranty or a third party warranty. Sell it. <laughs> what are your goals, Tyler? <laughs> yeah. uh, to not spend a bunch of money. <laughs> well, why do you have a Land Rover? <laughs> All right, so goal one has been failed. Dude, get rid of that. <laughs> that was four uh, year old, four years ago. Me so. buy a ship box and then buy a pista. Yeah, like, I, honestly, it's been solid though. It hasn't given me need any... a Corolla and a pista. Sure. Done. But I mean, yeah, Josh and I were term, talking about this on Sunday. So long term, those are not well. No, I know reputable cars. And if I did the extended warranty, it'd only be for two years or you know whatever that would be. Honestly, it sounds bad. You're in Texas. Buy a pickup truck. Well, that that if I get something else, it would be a truck. Yeah. Oh, then yeah, buy a cheap pickup truck, and then save the rest of the money. And there you go, an Aztec, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> get oh that, man, get that Chevy three point six liter V six. Yeah, let's go. All I, all I know is, man, I love my truck. Yep, I absolutely love it. It yeah. is the perfect daily driver for living in Texas. Oh yeah, I see that. Have you, did you have transmission problems? Not yet. I, yeah, it will not happen. yet. Because <laughs> I, I need to buy a truck. That, but so, from what I've read, they generally last about two hundred fifty thousand miles. Which, okay, like normally you'd be like, "Wow, that's pretty good." But you know, diesel trucks, the engines gonna last like seven hundred thousand miles. So it's yeah. like, yeah. oh man, the transmission blows out at two fifty. But I was like researching it; they're only like six grand. I was like. Pfft. Yeah, six nothing. grand for a transmission okay when they make them in mass to replace them all the time right <laughs> so i'm like let me understand this i bought a truck it'll still be worth a shit ton of money even at two hundred fifty thousand miles because it's a diesel yep so if the trans goes out and it's only six grand to fix it yeah i'll fix that so <laughs> yeah no. i'm just i was hoping to avoid having another car payment but I mean, oh, we can wow. help you with that. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, actually, seriously, if you want to buy a truck, there's so many trucks at auction. I'll Shit, believe it. I need yeah. to get one for towing for the race car. Oh, dude, let, let us know. Seriously, and a daily driver. You. I don't have a daily driver. No. There you go. Dude, so I need a for just for a like no. normal cars, dude. There's so many options. Really? Right. Okay, we got to oh talk God. more about that. Yeah, it's hard to buy like supercars on the, on the wholesale market because everyone you know, wants them and whatever, but like the regular stuff, pff, there's so many options out there. Yeah. It's crazy. All right. Absolutely crazy. Like we were, we were at, um, we were walking through the uh, CarMax lot a couple of weeks ago. There was a Ram 2500 diesel brand spanking new, like had like, I don't know what was it, like 12,000 miles on it or something like that. And it was like estimated value was only like, I don't know, like 60 grand or something like that. I was like, oh my God, like I want to buy this thing just to have another truck. <laughs> yeah, a backup from when the transmission fails. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh man. Too funny. Yeah, I have a, a 360 and a Miata. And I go. my wife and I share our car for so we have three cars, but really only one daily driver. And this year I need it's getting to the point where like we each need our own car. Yeah, like I'm doing so much car stuff, mm. and she's doing her thing, and like I need a car, and I need a car to tow. Yeah, so, so might as well make it the same. Truck, but I'm also not wanting to spend seventy, eighty grand on a new truck. True. Yeah, so. yeah. No, if, especially if you're just trying to buy like a regular fifteen hundred, yeah, or whatever. Yep. And super easy to get those. The diesels are expensive. I mean, because yeah. everyone wants a diesel. So, but the gas or trucks. Pff, shit they're uh they're, you know like you want a ford f-150 <laughs> yeah probably like everywhere. yeah mm. everywhere that's good to know yeah i'll have to hit yeah. you up <clears throat> well it is 9 30. cool that went quick it did jeez um oh yeah yeah tow yeah, with the tow. cayenne yeah <laughs> you can my, my miata's two uh 2275 pounds oh easy yeah Plus actually you know what you need to get is a ford expedition yeah. yeah, those things you, tow a boatload. Then you can sleep in the back. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Wouldn't need to book a hotel at the racetrack. Yeah. Yep. Heck yeah, man. I was actually looking at those, but they actually are really expensive. I'll sell you the like new ones. No, like the old ones. <laughs> All right, we got some. It, it can tow eight thousand pounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming, coming and joining us. We do appreciate it. Uh, we got. I actually edited five videos today, so we got lots of content coming your way. Uh, cool stuff, including Meg reviewed the GT3 RS before yeah. it sold. So I edited that today. It's going to be awesome. You guys will love that, and nice. we'll see you in next week. So, bye. bye. See you.